Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and uh, you know boys, today I had to talk about something that kind of blew me away. Now, what is the difference between Valve and Nintendo, okay? Nintendo does not like it when the audience that they cater to makes fan games, okay? You want to make a Pokemon fan game that's probably 99% better than what officially comes out? Good luck, it's gone. You wanna play another Metroid 2 remake? You wanna make a really good remake of, of Metroid 2? It's gone. And sure, Nintendo can make an official version, but I think personally shutting down fan games, especially of games that are over 15 years old at this point, uh, it, it is honestly childish. And I get it, there's gonna be people saying, but Muda, it's their IP. And I get it, but usually in those cases, Fan games are very much built from the ground up to be remakes, all right? Re re reinterpretations. Anyways, I'm playing another Metroid 2 remake on the old Steam Deck. And the reason why Valve is coming into question is you may have heard Valve has actually shut down a modder's hard work. So this is Team Fortress Source 2, all right? Source 2 aims to recreate a new Team Fortress experience in Source 2 using Sandbox. Now, for anybody that doesn't know what Sandbox is, Sandbox is a spiritual successor to Gary's Mod. Think of it, uh, Source 2, uh, Gary's Mod, made by Face Punch Studios. Now, Source 2, for anybody who doesn't know, is Valve's uh, current game engine, okay? For the longest time, we used to be playing on the Gold Source engine back in the days of Counter-Strike uh, Condition Zero. We moved on to Source with Half-Life 2, which was, at the time, a mind-bogglingly beautiful physics simulator. And we kept Source until Source 2 dropped. Now, Source 2, uh, I believe the only two games that operate within it commercially from Valve are um, Dota 2, which is like the first Source 2 game from my understanding, and most recently, Counter-Strike 2. Now, to understand, the difference between these game engines under the hood can be uh, massive, but obviously Team Fortress 2 in this situation is kind of like Valve's redheaded stepchild, okay? If you ever thought that your gaming community was like, you know, let's say that you were you were anybody that was a fan of a specific game franchise and you were like, damn, they forgot about me. Team Fortress 2 is pretty much up there with forgotten children like Silent Hill. And obviously Silent Hill is recently getting a remake. Uh, Team Fortress 2 last major seasonal update was the summer 2023 update with a few new maps again. These are not maps that I'm qualified to speak on because I don't play much of Team Fortress 2. In fact, the only one that plays Team Fortress 2 is surprisingly my brother, never expected it. But Team Fortress 2 is a game all the way back from 2007. I first played this on the old orange box on the Xbox 360. So of course, times have changed. Team Fortress 2 has obviously evolved. And of course, the community is still relatively alive and healthy. There have been some issues with bots, but then again, what multiplayer game doesn't really have a bot situation going on? That said, let's get back to the meat and potatoes of this situation. So you all know Team Fortress 2 exists. Valve hasn't really been updating it as much as you would expect. But of course, this is where the community decided to step in. So the Team Fortress Source 2 decided to produce the Source 2 version of this game. And it generally looked pretty damn decent. I mean, for the most part, it was effectively just Team Fortress 2 in Source 2 engine. But if you're looking closely at this, you'll notice that this has a lot of actual assets that are directly from Valve. So at this moment in time, none of this is an original piece of content. It's actually just the same assets, it seems. In fact, a lot of the similar assets brought from Team Fortress 2 as of it existing officially, all the way over to Team Fortress 2 Source 2. So in this regard, in comparing it to other fan games that Valve has promoted even, games like, I would say, Black Mesa, which if you looked into the history of, Black Mesa was developed in response to Half-Life Source 2004, Valve port of Half-Life to the Source engine, which lacked new features or improvements. The two teams wanted to improve on the Source remake and eventually merged to become Crowbar Collective. The team originally targeted a 2009 release date, but realized this had to be rushed to this point to reevaluate their efforts to improve the quality of the remake. And this was originally supposed to be a free third-party remake, but eventually it was a commercial release by Valve themselves, one that you can buy and experience for yourself. 
Now, for a company like Valve that has historically, in a way, relied on mods and modding support to build their catalog of games right now, if you look at the history of Counter-Strike, it didn't start off much other than a mod back in the Gold Source days. If you look in how, how they were uplifting actual developers like the Crowbar Collective or working deals for commercial releases for what initially started out as fan remakes, it is a stark contrast to Nintendo, like I mentioned earlier. But again, this was super weird for me to kind of sit down and wrap my head around because I wasn't really understanding if Valve would send DMCAs. So anyways, January 10th, uh, two days ago, they said, hey everyone, we have some unfortunate news to share. Today we received a DMCA takedown from Valve on all our public GitHub repositories and all its forks made by the community. So here they showcase an actual DMCA, which I looked through and they said, what is the nature of the claim here of the co copyright ownership? I am part of Valve's blank. I am authorized by Valve Corp to act on their behalf and submit IP infringement complaints. So IP can be anything related to your game's name, uh, the assets that are used inside it, like 3D models, maps, audio, you name it. So here it's like the original copyrighted work is Valve's game Team Fortress 2. The TF2 assets have been ported to Source 2 without permission and are being redistributed by Amper Software in a game mode for Face Punch's Sandbox. Face Punch has not licensed any Valve assets for Sandbox. The unauthorized porting and redistributing of Valve's assets violates Valve's IP. So I see a lot of misinformation floating around, but honestly, if you're directly taking another company's assets and IP work, Obviously, they're gonna fight you in the court of like the law. That's how it works. That's how trademarking, that's how copyright stuff tends to happen. This was not a simple fan game that existed like some Pokemon ROM somebody built, which even in that case, Nintendo unfortunately has some claim over. This isn't like some fan-made Mario game with entirely new assets. This isn't like a Metroid game with entirely new assets. This is literally them rebuilding a one-to-one -one version of Team Fortress 2 with their assets in another game all for free. And if you can understand, Team Fortress 2, even if it isn't as alive as Counter-Strike, probably makes Valve a money too. And obviously for a company like Valve, who needs money to continue their efforts and, and, and Steam Deck stuff and God knows what else, uh, yeah, they're probably going to jump into you. Any company would. And I'm not here to simp for Valve doing this. Obviously, I understand small community projects. This one probably was made out of good intentions, okay? Good intentions from these guys to recreate a game that they loved with an updated engine and hopefully rectifying some of the issues that still persist in the original game. Unfortunately, how they did it ended up putting them at the wrong end of the DMCA pipeline. And there isn't anything you can say that is going to make Valve wrong in this situation. Ethically, I do absolutely believe that Valve probably should have worked with these guys and maybe taken what they did at Face Punch or under Sandbox and maybe tried getting them to work on a Source 2 version of Team Fortress 2. Because honestly, the community was really behind it. The Team Fortress 2 community did generally enjoy this. And honestly, if Valve had chosen to work with these people, this may have had a much better ending. So anyways, we were discussing the project's future internally recently and already came to the conclusion to stop the development of the project due to the current state of code being unusable anymore with Sandbox's recent major engine changes and that we overall moved on from it. Sadly, this means this DMCA takedown is a nail in the coffin. We cannot bring it back and we've hit Valve's attention and it seems like they definitely don't want us to use their IP, which is totally fair and legal from them. Again, I believe these guys had good intentions. Unfortunately, they put themselves on the wrong end of the law, which look, I'm not the biggest fan of copyright laws myself, but obviously I think for a lot of people who were saying that this was some fan game, it was a one-to-one -one recreation, which is still very different. I just wish Valve would have worked directly closer with these individuals. That would have been better. Unfortunately, that DMCA notice I read you, yeah, that came from Valve's actual legal team directly. We'd received confirmation that the notice was truly sent by them and it was not a fraudulent report, which unfortunately can happen, but this is par for the course. Now, don't get me wrong, Team Fortress 2 still exists in the state that it does, so you can't download and play this game right now. But is it up to Valve to update this game or maybe give us a 
fucking third game in any of their libraries. Like, maybe we could get a Team Fortress 3. Shit, maybe we could get a Team Fortress Source 2 for crying out loud. I'm pretty sure Team Fortress Source itself already exists, but this is something that Valve should probably work towards and make sure that it, the best possible scenario would have probably ended with these guys potentially being brought into the fold, or at least their project commercially brought in by Valve. If they had chosen to actually port their Team Fortress 2 project over to Source 2, if these guys were doing the brunt of the work, maybe Valve could have brought in some of their people and actually given a final proper commercial product, which would have been a net benefit to the gaming community here anyways. And it's not like Valve doesn't hire people that aren't modders to this day. October 3rd, 2023, they hired a creator behind the popular Half-Life Alex mod for crying out loud. People who were responsible for the Half-Life Alex campaign style mods, where they actually added in modified campaigns to a goddamn VR game. I didn't even think that was a thing possible, which by the way, that's also a Source 2 game. I missed that, but yeah, this is one of the things that Valve is known for, and I wish they had actually worked more closely. Now, there was also another situation too recently where Portal 64 got taken down. And if you don't know Portal 64, it's basically a port of Portal to the Nintendo 64. And by God, it actually turns it into a ROM for the Nintendo 64 that, from what I understand, you may be able to play on actual legitimate hardware as well. I've never really played around with it, wasn't really the biggest Portal fan to begin with, so obviously I wasn't gonna sit around and modding it. But then again, this is impressive stuff. Valve has apparently taken this down and it actually has more to do with Valve respecting Nintendo. And the reason for that is, is that apparently the, in the development of this actual mod, you do need a copy of Portal to run this. Like there are files from the game that you bring over. And what it will do is actually use a specific library known as Lib Ultra, which again is an official SDK used to make all commercial Nintendo 64 games during the console's life. So because it was using official Nintendo tools that probably weren't authorized to be used by the modding community, Nintendo or Valve jumped in and just basically wanted to get their chestnuts legally out of the fire too, in case it ever came out that they were possibly facilitating this nonsense as well. Recently, Valve has also released, I believe, Portal 2, the Portal Collection on the Switch. So I don't think they want to piss off Nintendo any more than they do with the Steam Deck and the constant emulating of Switch games. But let's move on beyond all of this. So to be honest, guys, at the end of all this, guys and gals, like this is just par for the course on what I expected legally to happen. Again, this would be one thing if these guys were making like Team Fortress 3 with all unique assets. Then I don't think Valve would have ever really done anything, but obviously when you're wholesale ripping assets, any company is going to be mad at you. And I think Valve is probably the most charitable of companies in this situation. Had this been, you know, again, Nintendo, this project would have been dead a week after its announcement. Had this been anything related to Grand Theft Auto, which could have ever yoinked any form of revenue away from Rockstar Take Two, probably would have been nuked into oblivion. I mean, there are a lot of issues regarding copyright and especially when companies this big get involved. But yeah, I wanted to look into it and this isn't a case of Valve taking down a fan game out of being malicious. It literally is being taken down because this is a one-to-one -one copy of one of their current projects. Now, personally, I think while legally Valve is in the right, I think ethically this whole situation could have been done better had Valve probably chosen to strike a deal with these people and have them maybe create a version of Team Fortress under Source, maybe something that would be more open-ended, something for the community, and then release that underneath Steam itself. That would be cool. I mean, that harkens to a lot of their popular fan games. I mean, recently there was a Portal 2 game, a fan community campaign game that just dropped and I had it added to my library. I mean, there's a lot of stuff Valve is tolerant with, with their games and single player expansions or just expansions in general. I think in this situation, they probably should have struck a deal and maybe had that happened, maybe the situation would be different and we'd be talking about a cool Team Fortress game releasing. But unfortunately, that's not the world we live in. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like if you dislike it, I am out.